the last couple of weeks have seen a significant growth in my collection. But the ones I want to talk about today are the Corningware uh, percolators that I've done reviews of two of them. In fact, of the reviews that I've done, the reviews of both the stovetop percolator here and the Spice of Life electromatic percolator over there have far and away been the most popular. I've recently purchased two new Corningware percolators, um, and I'm pretty excited about both of them. A couple of weeks ago, I managed to find at a thrift store the Platinum Filigree uh, per percolator uh, that seems to have been a special edition produced by Corningware between 1966 and 69. It's got this really lovely um, filigree, Platinum Filigree design. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had a decent amount of luck finding new toys in various locations. There's a few new mocha pots that I haven't reviewed on the top, specifically the two that are on the left. I did a review of the one on the right, which is just weird. However, what I want to talk about today are the Corningware percolators that I've done reviews of two of these, and I've had a third for a while, but most recently I've found these two in the middle. Today we're going to be looking at the Atomic Starburst, and I believe this is a black Atomic Starburst. I actually bought this from somebody on Facebook and I had to drive half an hour to get it. It certainly is not the way I usually collect these. However, it strikes me that, as far as I can tell, this is a very rare Corningware percolator. This other one is also fairly rare. It's the Platinum Filigree and was made from 1966 to 1969. Um, as a special edition, and as you can see, it's got a, a metallic sheen to the the filigree that goes around the stainless steel band. You'll notice that this one doesn't have a stainless steel top. In fact, it has the glass top that the rest of it's made out of, and this one's actually in really good shape because the reason Corning went to the metal top is that the um, lip here would get chipped fairly easily. So today we're going to look at the Black Atomic P108 8 cup Corningware percolator. So what we're going to be looking at today is a P108 8 cup Black Atomic design percolator. It predates 1960 because it has the uh, it doesn't have a metal lip on the top and it's got a handle that is screwed onto the stainless steel band, which means it's not part of the Corningware recall. Um, it turns out some of these others, I believe most likely the um, Platinum Filigree, in fact, that I'm so enamored with, uh, probably shouldn't be used because the epoxy in the handle uh, has been known to separate from the metal. But what we're gonna be looking at uh, should be perfectly safe. Uh, this one is in phenomenal shape. It's been used. There's a little bit of um, little bit of discoloration on the bottom that can probably get taken care of, but it doesn't have any chips around the lip, which is a common problem with these, if you can find them. It comes with all the parts that you would expect. It has a top with a... Uh, and actually, interestingly enough, this is a metal top with the glass knob. And one thing that I found really interesting was it has a spring-loaded uh, little pin there that keeps it in place, one on each side, uh, which helps it stay locked into the top. It also has something that I found fairly interesting, which was this lip on the lid, um, which sits up in the top. and actually has, on occasion, been relatively difficult to get the top on because of the lip fits so snugly within it. Everything else is fairly standard. Um, it has markings for making six or eight cups. There we go, six or eight cups inside. Very handy. And so we're going to go ahead and make six cups in this percolator today. Okay, we have water filled up to the six line. We have coffee, and as always, I'm using a filter in the filter basket. Like most percolators, it slides on easily there. Fits in 
rather snugly inside. We'll put our lid on. And again, metal top, and it has been a little difficult to get on snugly the first time, although it worked just fine now. Okay, let's see how this works. I actually had to do a little bit of jiggling to get it to seat in nicely. While it's heating up, I just did a little bit more research, and it looks like this has to be a Platinum Starburst because it was only made from 1959, or sorry, it was only made in 1959 with the Pyroceram um, lip. And they didn't make the black sunburst, starburst, until... It turns out when I put that on, the lid didn't sit down properly. I had to give it a bit of a jiggle to get it to put to a seat the way it should. I was also doing a little bit more research, and it looks like this has to be the Platinum Starburst design uh, because it has the Pyroceram lip, um, which means that this came out in 1959, and the Platinum Starburst design here is the first design that they put onto percolators. Uh, that year they also made the um, blue cornflower, but this is the first fancy one. I'm increasingly excited about this percolator. You may have looked at uh, this one in the background and said, but wait a second, doesn't that also have the Pyroceram all the way up to the lip? It does. However, this model of percolator uh, was produced after the recall and was only made for a little while in the early 80s. Uh, it's got the bulbous design as opposed to the much more rectilinear design that we see with the other percolators. After about five minutes, we're starting to hear a little bit of sound coming from it. Uh, it certainly is not the fastest percolator we've ever seen. It's taken it about nine minutes to start to get some steam coming out of the spout, but nothing's coming up through the bulb yet. Oh, well, that was fortuitous. At nine minutes, we're starting to get it to come through the bulb. I might have to go look at some old videos, but I don't think I've seen any of our other percolators steam nearly so much while the brewing process was going on. I wonder what interior design changes kept some of that steam from escaping. In 11 minutes, we're starting to see some brown in the water, and we're making coffee. sure I love the sound that this makes. It's not as bad as some, but I think quite possibly the plastic lids, unlike this metal one, will rattle a little bit less. I actually really wouldn't mind finding a stovetop percolator from the 60s as opposed to the electromatic percolators from the 60s that I have. about 15 minutes. I think we give it a few more minutes. But one of the things that I find really interesting about this experience is that it doesn't seem to kick up much water in each particular bubble. Obviously that means it's going to take longer for the coffee to steep into the water. After about 15 minutes, sorry, 16 minutes, I think we've done all we can do. We're gonna pour it out, see how it goes.
This should come as no surprise, considering it was essentially just literally boiling in the pot on the stove, that it's over 200 degrees, um, which is a temperature I find to be pretty much undrinkable. So we're going to have to let it cool down a little bit. After letting the coffee cool down a little bit, I have to say it's pretty much exactly what I was hoping for from a stovetop Corningware percolator. That is to say there's almost no metallic taste. Um, it's a crisp, clean cup of coffee. Part of that might be because I used filter paper or um, coffee filter inside the filter basket, but I'm very happy with this percolator. So I'm going to, you know, keep collecting these Corningware, I think. I'm going to keep looking for them at thrift stores. And if you run into one, uh, especially a taller one like this with the um, Pyroceram top, I would highly suggest that you pick it up. Uh, they were not part of the recall, and uh, apparently they are relatively dear. If you uh, were to look for one on eBay, um, I've seen these for $150 or so. Luckily, I didn't have to pay quite that much. Um, I did get it for $30 on Facebook Marketplace. So I'm very satisfied with this purchase. If you're at all interested in the Corningmore percolators, and part of me thinks that you have to be if you're watching this video, I would strongly recommend that you check out the uh, bluecornflower.com or the corningware411.com, as both of those have a uh, significant amount of information about designs and years and whether or not the percolator is part of the recall. Sometime when I have coffee drinking company again, I'm going to do a comparison with the various speeds of the uh, electromatic coffee makers. So how does the Platinum Filigree hold up next to the Spice of Life, next to the uh, six cup blue corn flour? I think that would be a fun thing, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully I can do that sometime soon.